Hello, welcome to lecture four. This is going to be a shorter one. We're going to recap on stuff. I'm going to demo a few new techniques. So it's going to be really important in this lecture, even though it's shorter, that we're taking good notes. So we're going to deal with uh, relative angles. We're going to deal with ellipses, which is going to be a brand new thing we're going to be working on in class. It's going to be very important when we start working on the next big project, which is going to be cross contour. So while drawing, one of the toughest things to kind of master to understand is foreshortening. And it took a long time to understand foreshortening. You know, they had to make some inventions. There was lots of scientific experiments. But foreshortening is a distortion of that happens when our eye sees an object from kind of a peculiar angle or from a far off distance. So we have a wine bottle opener over here on the right. You can see there's the cork screw right there there's the little thing that you pull at the top and it's at this really peculiar angle so the distance is really hard to kind of understand if we're drawing because there's a lot of three-dimensional space that we now have to flatten out and depict two-dimensionally so we're trying to trick that eye into understanding this is three-dimensional space in this lecture we're going to talk about axis lines and angles i'm going to go over the face of a clock method for getting relative angles we're going to talk about axis lines that run through the center of forms and how we can use those to make things feel more symmetrical and how they're important to kind of indicate dominant directions of objects. And we're also going to be talking about, you know, using our sighting stick to get these different angles, to figure out these different axes, and to draw ellipses. So let's talk about relative angles. So we have an axis line that goes down through the middle of these objects. Like so, you can see how these objects are often drawn where we can see through them. We can see the ellipse on the bottom. You can see how they often have these kind of weird crosshairs happening on these ellipses. So when we're trying to find relative angles, you know, especially on like boxes, things that are a little bit more complex, it can be kind of hard, it can be kind of tricky. If I wanted to draw all these cakes, you know, that might be hard to think about at first. You know, there's lots of different angles going on in this image. So if I'm trying to find this cake up front, how I would do it is I would think about it a little bit more simply. So we could do the hands of a clock method. So I have a clock up here. We can all read a clock. So you can see that it is 10 till 2. So if I'm trying to draw this cake, maybe instead of looking at all this foreshortening and getting very, you know, intimidated by it, we can think about it as a hands of a clock. So we can all read that this is, you know, 10 minutes after 11 and be able to get those angles a lot easier. So when we're doing this method, we want to make sure that our either drawing pencil, our magic wand that I handed out, our ruler is flush like this and that it's not going back into space. Okay. So drawing ellipses is something also that is really tough. There's some foreshortening stuff that's happening. So if I want to go draw the ellipse of this pie down here at the bottom left, and then I went to go draw another one, maybe up at the top, I would realize that this guy is a lot bigger than this one up top. And this is happening because at eye level, you know, we don't see the tops of those objects. But as they go you know, below our eye level, we see more of them. So drawing ellipses is complicated. There's some measuring that we're going to have to do to make them look accurate. So we can see this here. We have our eye level, and they get bigger, 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 bigger as they go down or up from that eye level. So there are some complicated ways of drawing ellipses. I'm not going to throw you into the deep end right off the bat. We'll get into those eventually. For right now, we're going to talk about some axis lines. So we're going to talk about how we have a ellipse, maybe this is the top of a cup or a pie. We're going to talk about these axis lines. Okay, so we got two. We have our major axis that goes the longer side and our minor axis. So we always got a major and a minor that we're going to be finding. We can use siding to help us get accurate measurements of those. So I want to draw this cup of coffee and how I would do it is I would go and I would first 
find out what my minor axis is going to be. So I would cite it. So I'd take my little uh, shish kebab stick that I gave you. You'd figure out how tall that minor axis is. Then we would use that to kind of find our major axis. So I could figure out that it's one, two, and a half wide. So from there, I could use that crosshairs, and I can go and start to figure out the length of my major versus my minor and draw my ellipses out. So then it would be the right proportions for that oval shape. So we can see here that you know they're using a major and a minor always. They're drawing things like they're invisible first, so they can get accurate ellipses of things that are on the ground. So we're going to be working like that as we're drawing in class. So I got this can. Let's talk about this bottom ellipse down here. I'm trying to find that one out. How I'd go about drawing it. I first off find that top ellipse, so I'd find that minor axis, use that to help me find my major axis. I would sight measure down to figure out where is the can, where does it meet at the bottom. So maybe right where the corners are at. I would draw that major axis down. And then what I could do, if I'm having issues finding my minor, is I could use a little siding to get half my minor axis. I could double it. And then I can go and draw that bottom ellipse, and it'll be more accurate. And we can use the same technique even on domes, right? We can go and find our major and our minor axis and make a more accurate dome that's resting on the ground. Okay, so this is the pretty important, being able to use those relative angles. Pretty important to find your major and minor axis so you can cite ellipses. So I'd say definitely be practiced in those things. If you got questions, let me know. We'll be working on it together. And uh, if you want to, proceed to the next part of this module and start diving into that sketchbook homework.